part of the development of the underground station was to provide uh, new access to the Piccadilly, the Northern and the Victoria line uh, to relieve congestion and also to provide uh, step-free access uh, to the deep underground uh, lines uh, here at the uh, King's Cross station. The deepest point of excavation for the project was 21 meters below ground. So if you think about it, that's on the order of seven stories underground. It's absolutely massive. Funding was withdrawn for the project, so um, things were put on hold for approximately a year. Um, but then with the announcement of the uh, London 2012 Olympics, um, both this project and the Network Rail project very quickly had to uh, get back online to be ready for the Olympics. The top of the tunnels is within a few meters from the foundations, so we had to make sure that it, the steps were taken in a way to limit the, the, the movements of the foundations. And we had a, a particular system in place uh, that would inject some, uh, some materials a, a, a grout, which is a cemented material, that, that would push up the building for any movement that went uh, above a certain level that was uh, decided in advance. Uh, so this is a fantastic technique because anything that is affected by a construction on the ground uh, can be pushed back in the original position and it allows the construction of uh, big tunnels anywhere in a large city like London, where there are a lot of very nice and very important buildings. It's a large space in terms of, of the extent and plan, but it's a fairly uniform space in terms of the height. And that space needed to be no more than, than the absolute minimum. Um, that's because of the King's Cross mainline station above. We also weren't able to get any natural light in because the King's Cross mainline station above. And all of those things make the space in a way less pleasant than, than you'd ideally want it to be. So our challenge architecturally was to try and, and animate the space. So on the one hand, we needed to be, it to be very clear. It needs to be very obvious how you move through as a passenger. You should not even be having to think or make decisions. It should just be obvious and logical. But at the same time, as architects, we wanted to make it a pleasant space to be. And so we did that with the ceiling, um, which was pretty much the only thing that we had to play with. And we did that by breaking the ceiling up into various planes and, and trying sort of subtly to articulate the flow of movement. Um, eventually, the figures uh, will reach 110,000 people per, per peak, which is what, what, what our station is designed to cope with. And. Um, the, 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 there's, there's no reason why that, that won't be able to continue to grow and, and, and with, with new signalling we'll, we'll naturally clear the platforms uh, quicker which will make the whole experience of travelling through the station a, uh, a pleasant one. It's a tough job, you work with a lot of numbers but what I like of engineering is the, the practical aspect the fact that you invest time to, to design something and then you see it happen so it's uh, that practical aspect uh, of your efforts. So. Is incorporating all of the stuff that needs to be seamlessly incorporated and so the ATMs, the signage, the, the advertising, which is a huge revenue generator for tra Transport for London, and it's right that we should try and incorporate that if it can help subsidize our transport. There are very strict requirements in terms of light levels, so we need to have quite a few lights. There are strict requirements in terms of contrast between different surfaces for the visually impaired, so we need to accommodate all of those requirements. So there's, there's sort of quite a lot of boxes that you need to tick in terms of the stuff. Um, and somehow that needs to all feel like it's a thought through space that makes sense in its own right and that's actually quite a challenge. What was very exciting for me was to be part of a, of a big team of people that work to develop uh, King's Cross that is a uh, very important uh, hub for the City of London. So to know that uh, I gave a contribution to, to make all of this happen that for, the, from, for this perspective of a young engineer, it's a great achievement, something that I'm very proud of. There's a future uh, of, of construction and, and engineering works that's uh, looking forward for the next 20, 30 years. So um, the, the level of investment required for London uh, Underground uh, and, and, and for London to be able to grow um, means that, that, that uh, stations have to be modernized, regenerated, redeveloped. 
Um, so it's, it's a good time to be an engineer. There hasn't been a better time. I love being an architect and I'm so glad I made that choice. I think it's been a brilliant decision. What I love about working on this project is that it's something that so many people use. It's a part of the everyday life of hundreds of thousands of people and it's it's something that an even larger number than that will use on a more occasional basis. So you're really making a difference. The decisions that you make and what you're creating is something that matters for a lot of people. And that's really quite a privilege.